Way back in the summer of 2021, when I started working at Clearwater Music, I found this really nice old instrument in the back of the shop, and I set out to do a review on it. I filmed the playing, I filmed the speaking, got it all done, set out to edit it, and I found that some of my speaking footage got lost or corrupted or something, and I just immediately scrapped it all. I was so frustrated. It's been a year and a half now. I think I've put it off long enough, so here I am with the same shirt on. Let's do this. Hey y'all, this is your host Sam from the Samuel Plays Brass channel. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope y'all are doing better than I was when I found out I lost some of the footage from this review. In the end, I'm really glad I did, and here's why. The first time I recorded the speaking for this review, it was rushed, not well researched, and I was spouting nonsense. I had no idea what I was holding in my hands, and I just said some general stuff and didn't really make any good points. So I'm very glad that I lost some of that footage and had to take some time to recoup. And I'd like to express my gratitude to a viewer of mine, Ron Burnt, a notable brass historian who has helped me set the record straight on what this instrument actually is. So without further ado, today we'll be making things right. Stay tuned to hear about the Con 21i Artist Model Euphonium. <laughs> First up, I'd like to shed some light on a naming discrepancy, as I would call it with this horn. I would not like to conflate this horn and others like it with the modern euphonium as we know it. That is an instrument that is more conical in nature, its tubing flares out more throughout the instrument. It's wrapped a little bit differently, generally with upward valves rather than forward-facing valves, and it's usually predisposed to producing a very, very different sound than what we see here. And so what I would like to call the 21i and others like it is a modern American baritone. I'm just going to be calling it a baritone from here on out to keep from sounding too pedantic. But that's kind of uh, something that I wanted to clear up right from the get-go. In any case, these Con Artist Euphoniums, as they were originally called, were released in four configurations in the late 50s. The 20i was the same instrument, three valves, just the forward bell. There's the 21i, which we were playing in this video, and you can see a picture of one from an advertisement from the late 50s there, just in lacquer rather than satin silver. Then there was Leonard Falcone's personal horn of choice, the 22i, which was four valves and a forward bell, and the 23i, which would be my personal choice that I hope to maybe acquire someday if I'm crazy enough to get one, and that is four valves with an upward bell. Personally, I'm not one for the forward bell aesthetic, but to each their own. A lot of people really like the antiquity that that comes with, but in any case, it's not necessarily my thing. But these four instruments were released as the artist line, the bottom two were later displaced by the 24i and 25i Constellation models, which were same general build as those two, respectively. Unfortunately, I no longer have access to the 21i from this video, so I can only go off of the one picture I foolishly took of it way back when, but features of note include that awesome satin silver finish that old cons were famous for. Unfortunately, not so much of a thing today, so it's known for being rather antique, but it had this satin silver and nice engraving on the bell. And the valves, most notably, had a short action stroke. The stroke on regular con baritones you can feel is quite long. That throw from top of action to bottom of action, it's a long way down for your fingers. So these short strokes were designed to make pressing the valves all the way down a little bit easier. And consequently, the valve ports are actually oval shaped. They're kind of squashed down rather than the usual, more or less perfectly circular ports, at least if well machined. These ones are actually really squashed down significantly. And you'd think that'd have more consequences than perhaps it actually does. It feels like it would restrict airflow, but actually these horns did tend to play really, really well for their time. But that right there is the trouble. The playing state of this 21i is not at all representative of one that would have been in new or better condition, because this instrument has had a pretty rough life. First of all, most majorly, the valves are not airtight with their casings, which means that air is leaking out and causing really undesirable effects to tone, tuning, slotting, the whole nine yards. Unfortunately, especially the third valve, the casing was slightly out of round and therefore had to be burnished back into a circular shape to get the valve to fit at all, but that means the valve fits rather suboptimally and leaks. Second of all, maybe on a scale of slightly less importance, the bell of this instrument has been work hardened. Work hardening is a common phenomenon in metalworking that in the context of brass instruments usually happens when an instrument is dented significantly and you spend a little too much time rolling or pressing those dents out. When you do, the metal hardens considerably and this more brittle metal actually translates to a more brittle sound. So this instrument actually sounds a little bit harsher and less soloistic than it would if it were in better condition. So unfortunately, this all and more means that I cannot do a fully objective assessment of the tone or playability of this instrument, and so we have to proceed knowing that this is more of a show-and-tell episode than an objective instrument review. 
Now, ironically, with that all said and done, we're going to be talking about such things as playability and tone right now. We're just going to have to do some speculating and hopefully glean a general assessment of this instrument in context of other con artist euphoniums. First of all, that short stroke valve action that I talked about should, in theory, make trills and fast runs a little bit easier on this instrument. I definitely did notice nice trills. <laughs> They didn't feel that significantly better than the conventional long stroke con baritone valves, but they did feel a little bit cleaner. The trouble with this instrument was that when the run in question spanned a larger range than just oscillating between two pitches, then the damage on the instrument, those leaky valves, made it a little bit harder to transition through the registers, and so the runs ended up being kind of dirtied up a little bit, if you will. <laughs> Now when you play on short stroke valves that aren't leaking air out of their casing with every breath you take, you'll find that you're dealing with more fluidity in your sound, and that's why people talk about fast runs and trills when they mention short action valves. Those sorts of things can be easier for a couple of reasons. First of all, physically you're not moving your fingers as far, of course, but on those short action valves you may find that the notes in these fast runs blend into each other a little bit more fluidly or more continuously, rather than the harsh articulation of those long stroke valves. It's an effect almost akin to the rotary valve, but a little bit different, and both of those sorts of things can take a little bit of getting used to, acoustically speaking. It's a little bit different than playing on those conventional long stroke valves, so while you may find it easier to do those fast runs, it does take some acclimating. Some people might also be predisposed to say that those oval valve ports, when you squash them down like that, cause a certain restrictiveness or stuffiness in the feel or sound of the instrument because you're effectively restricting airflow by squashing those valve ports down. I would argue that's not the case to nearly the extent that some people think, and to demonstrate that I'm going to show you this mouthpiece here, I just grabbed it off the spool rack behind me. It's a Dennis Wick Model 6BS, the same size that I played on this review, I just used Clearwater's one in gold plate rather than my personal, because that's what was available to me at the time. We're going to take a look at this mouthpiece from this angle, you'll see there's a hole there to let air through, not too surprising. I can see you through this hole, but chances are you can't see much of me. It's a fairly small bore for the mouthpiece. It's much less than half an inch in diameter, as are most of these things when it comes to trombone and baritone and euphonium mouthpieces. And the reason I bring this up is because the bore, which is generally measured at the valve section of a baritone or euphonium, is generally much larger than 0.5 inches on almost any low brass instrument. An exception might include this Con 14H trombone, which has a very small 0.485 inch bore. But when we're talking baritones and euphoniums, don't expect to find anything less than half an inch at the valve section. And my point is, even when you squash that, that valve port down to an oval, neither that major nor that minor diameter are really going to be anything less than 0.5 inches. And when this is significantly the point of greatest resistance on the entire apparatus, both mouthpiece and instrument, this is mainly what regulates airflow, and you're not going to notice too much. There might be a tiny amount of added turbulence due to the shape not being perfectly circular but really it's not as pronounced as an, of an effect as you might think, and so these instruments don't tend to feel stuffy to play if they're in good condition. Now a big part of the reason I pedantically refer to this as an American baritone, even though it was originally marketed as a euphonium, is because of its sound. This instrument is bright. Yes, very much so. Especially this particular one with its work-hardened bell causing that extra brittleness and harshness in the sound. Yeah, the sound definitely takes on a different character from what we'd expect from the modern euphonium. Even if you listen to Leonard Falcone on his new 21i back in the day, wow. First of all, incredible technical facility and one of the most singing sounds you'll ever hear. But it's a brash sound for sure. It is so different from that of a modern euphonium. That's partly due to recording technology and partly due to changes in pedagogy and equipment over time, but the reality is these con artist euphoniums definitely don't sound like typical modern euphoniums. They are definitely bright, but something to keep in mind is that this is not the same brightness as a typical British baritone. Those are sort of thinner and more pointed sounding instruments, whereas these baritones or euphoniums, call them whatever you will, although they have a certain directionality to them and they're definitely on the, on the brighter side, they are a more bold and present sounding instrument than the thinner sounding British baritone. 
The idea of this continuum of brightness to darkness from the British baritone to the modern euphonium where the American baritone should theoretically sit somewhere in the middle is something that warrants an entire video of its own and something that I hopefully will do in future to just clear a few things up. But these con artist models being artist models and presumably being good for the soloist or artist do have a lot of capability for a soloistic sort of sound. You really can sing through these instruments and they are fairly technically agile. Even this one though is in poor condition. Now when I think of Ford's this instrument and singing capabilities is the fact that it has a very present sound. I think that's the best way I can describe it. This particular one may come off as a little bit barky or harsh, especially on the lower register. <laughs> But one of these that's in better condition would, I think, sound really, really soloistic in the right hands. And it'd be great for a wide variety of things, from those nice, broad, singing, operatic melodies to anything as far as jazz. I really do think the Con Company was onto something with these artist model baritones and euphoniums. My impressions after playing this particular one were, wow, this is a really special horn. You know, I love the big presence of sound and the flexibility, the agility. It just has a great vibe in the hands and on the face. Just an awesome instrument, way better than most baritones I've played up to this point. And that was before I knew that A, this was a well-respected, notable model of euphonium back in the day, and that B, this one was badly damaged. And so bearing both those things in mind, this is not only a special instrument, but back in its heyday, it must have been a dream to play. And all I can say to that end is I want one. Someday, I hope to have my own 22 or 23i, Preferably, I just have the four valve body and then one of each bell. I can use the straight 23i bell for more classical playing, and then the 22i I can take to polka gigs, because believe it or not, German polka bands will sometimes actually substitute the tuba for one of these goofy looking forward bell, four valve American baritone horns. And you gotta hear it to believe it, but they have a crazy, huge, and resonant sound down there. It is amazing how well these things can do on bass lines arguably maybe even better than the bigger, more conical modern euphonium, which is so weird to say, but yeah, I just, I gotta say, I want one of these. In any case, I think I'll get off my soapbox before I drag this on for too long. I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for sticking around. I'd like to thank Ron Burns for making this video possible. I really enjoyed diving back into this and sort of reconstructing this review, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Trust me, this is way better than if I would have released it a year and a half ago. That was, that was not good. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. We got plenty more of this stuff coming out, so make sure to check that you're subscribed to the Samuel Plays Brass channel. A lot of people watch my videos fairly frequently and don't realize that they're not subscribed. That's a very large majority, as you can see there. So if that's you, please consider joining the Samuel Plays Brass gang and subscribing down below. It's a small gesture with a huge impact on the channel and keeps you caught up. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This has been Sam of Samuel Plays Brass reviewing the Con 21i Artist Model Euphonium. And until next time, we'll see you on the flip side. I'm tired of talking so fast. Boom, let's go.